Hello, this is Professor Urbis White. Today we will look at inverse cosine. You need to watch the regular cosine video, the graph of cosine, before you watch this. So, make sure that you're familiar with the graph of cosine first. Okay, let's remember what the graph of cosine was like. And it was like a U like that, remember, when you go from 0 to 2 pi. And since it is not 1 to 1 in that region, we, I need to limit the region where cosine is 1 to 1. So this is the region I pick. I just drew it in red. And that is the cosine function that, that goes from 0 to pi. So when I go from 0 to pi and draw the cosine, Here's the cosine x. These are the points of interest. The first one is 0, 1, because I know cosine of 0 is 1. The second one is cosine of pi, which is negative 1. And in the middle, cosine of pi over 2, that's 0. So this, this curve is cosine x. And remember how inverses work. They are reflected along y equals x, so we go and we draw our y equals x line. And then we go and we pick our green, and we need to go and draw the reflection of that. So what is going to happen is this pi negative 1 is going to be reflected all the way to here, negative 1 pi. And this one, 0, 1, is going to be reflected to 1, 0. So, here's a picture of my inverse, cosine. So, it's going to go from, when you look at it, it used to be for cosine, it used to go 0 to pi, and uh, y was going negative 1 to 1. For the inverse, my x is going to go from negative 1 to 1, and the y is going to go, from 0 to pi. Now, what does that mean? I limited my angles into this top portion of my cosine. So, quadrant 1 and 2. So, when I get cosine inverse of something, the angle that I get out of this has to be either quadrant 1 or quadrant 2. Alright, very good. Now that we have that, I just plug that in in my graphing calculator and just drew the inverse cosine on the same graph, y equals x on the same graph, and cosine x in red on the same graph. So let's go do um, a couple of examples. Let's say somebody was asking you, what is cosine inverse of negative one-half? Well, let's do this, um, uh, you know, uh, by... Um, using a calculator. So, let me show you how it will work with a calculator. You are going to make sure that your mode of the calculator is in radian, and make sure that um, you have that set. And then we are going to go get cosine inverse of negative one-half. All right, so it gave me 2.09, and you know what that is? It's actually 2 pi over 3, okay? So it is 2 pi, pi is 3 something, 6 divided by 3, it's 2 something. So it is 2 pi over 3, but let's say I don't know that, and I want to show you how that's done in, um, you know, using trigonometry. Okay, so let's go do this. So this is what you do. What cosine is going to give me one-half? Okay, I know that it is pi over 3. That cosine is going to give me one-half. Okay? But the problem is I cannot have positive. So I need to have negative because this is negative. So... The other angle that's going to give me that negative is going to have to be that one. 
So your reference angle is pi over 3 here. So the angle that I'm looking for is this angle. What is that angle? If my reference angle is pi over 3, and this whole thing is pi, pi minus pi over 3, so it is 3 pi over 3 minus pi over 3, that actually is 2 pi over 3. So what did you get? So cosine inverse of negative 1 half is simply 2 pi over 3, because I need to stay in first or second quadrant. Um, let's do another one. Let's give an example of what is cosine inverse of rad 2 over 2. That one is positive. And I know, I kind of have to remember, what angle gives me rad 2 over 2? I remember that from my past life, that it is simply pi over 4. And remember, is that answer in first or second quadrant? Yes, it's in the first quadrant, then you're done. You don't have to do any more thinking because you are already in the first quadrant.